Hello, my name is Lynn Fife, and I'm here to tell you about the a Enhanced Painting Estimating System for Painting Contractors. Now, this is a plug-in for PlanSwift. PlanSwift is a digital takeoff software where we have taken it to the next level. Now, prior to watching this video, it's a good idea to first watch the video called the a System for Painting. Then watch this video, which will show you all the enhancements we have made to that system, mostly on the Excel backend features. Now also we're limited on time, so I'm going to rush through this thing very quickly, but it's no problem. If you would like to see a screen or study the screen, just go ahead and hit your pause button. And then when you're done, go ahead and hit the resume button. You can also go back and pick up anything you may have uh, missed. So let's go ahead and jump into PlanSwift and take a look at how this system works. This is an example of a project in PlanSwift. Now for the users who've already been using this, you'll know that the templates are up here on the right hand side. We've already selected the TI, that's the Tenant Improvement Painting Set. And we're gonna jump into the interior just to show you a few differences. Nothing has changed here. You still click on interior, select the walls. And let's go ahead and add some walls at eggshell latex. We'll click the go button here. And you'll notice that the pop-up screen is now going to add a few more boxes here for entering some data. As before, we'll type in what it is. It's just a small board. Walls at, and let's say they're in the lobby area at 14 feet. And they're going to put an accent color of P4 in there. So that's going to be my definition. So we'll copy that. We'll paste that into the description. I will set my wall height to 14 feet, as usual. And it's going to default to one prime and two finish codes, which is most specs. It's going to add a primer code, GP and EL, which is used for the new features in the Excel spreadsheets on the back end. Defaults will show up as before. We'll just go ahead and hit OK. Let's pick a better color here. Let's make this a bright red, easier to see. And we'll hit OK. And then we'll go ahead and zoom down in here into my lobby area, where these now are going to be marked as 14-foot high walls, just like any other... Uh, project you've had, just go ahead and click the digitize your points to measure where that applies. Okay, let's pick up a couple of square walls here just because we like being efficient. And pick up this one over here. And that's going to set us up for that. Now by doing that, and again we don't have time in this video to show you all the features of how you can do everything, we'll assume the takeoff is completely done here. When we go to the estimating tab, you can now see that that has been added here to the bottom, walls, 14 feet P4, and it gives you your lineal foot quantity here, square foot quantity, unit price, the complete breakdown. This would be a good time to hit the pause button just so you could look at that. You'll notice the last two columns have been added for these codes, which then transfer through to the Excel spreadsheet on the back end. As before with this one, we just go ahead and click on the Export to Excel, and when you do, it will bring up your export sheet, showing you the complete breakdown we have here, including those two codes at the end. We'll take this and, as before, copy it and paste it into the PlanSwift Master. This is what it'll show up when it pastes into the PlanSwift Master. Now here you notice that we've added some features where we've added a navigation bar over here to the left to make things incredibly easy. So the first thing we'll do is we'll click on the PlanSwift estimate. You'll notice this screen has changed dramatically, giving us only the basic information that we need to see. This is basically what PlanSwift gave us. We don't really edit anything on this page. The only thing we do here is we can assign it the project name, double check our labor rate, and we can uh, give it a job number here when you get the contract. We can select from a drop down list which estimator bid this project in case you have more than one estimator. And up here is where we select the supplier that we're going to use in column L. It's got a drop-down box here. Yes, we've added drop-down boxes all over the place to make things easier. You can select from four manufacturers. This is Sean williams Benjamin Moore. PP is Pittsburgh Paints, and BP is Bear Paints. And you can select the grade. Now, number one is industry standard grade. In other words, the least expensive. Number two is VOC compliant. Number three is LEED. Now you'll notice by selecting this here, it will automatically set up the materials with its specific unit price, that means how much you pay per gallon, and its spread rate. And we'll see this on these other tabs that we edit. Now that we just have this as re referencing here, we can edit the materials and we can edit the labor here, or we can use the menu bar over here to do the same thing. So let's start with edit the labor. Now, the edit labor looks very similar to what we've had before, where you can change the hours over here to whatever you want. 
It made this a little easier because it shows us the estimated hours that PlanSwift gave us, and we can change the hours to whatever we want to to get the bid more fine-tuned to what we feel would uh, be more effective. Also over here in columns M and N, this will show you that PlanSwift used 399.7, that's basically 400 square feet per hour. And when you change these hours over here to say 48, then that will automatically change up to a new production rate here so that if you're constantly changing your hours, just pay attention to the production rate so that you can fine tune plan so it can get that dialed in later on. Now we can also look at the materials with the edit materials button over here on the left. Same as before, I can change the spread rate to a different rate and I can change the price to a different price in case I get a better deal from the supplier. Now the edit material database will allow me to go directly to that database and change the prices in the database so that if I change it here, I may want to change it permanently in my material database for the supplier and have that default later. Now this is a cool feature that we've just added. Spread rate adjustment. Now if I move this to zero, then you'll notice the spread rate is 300 square feet per gallon. That's on the can. However, on this project, we're going to put in a 10% adjustment giving me more square footage per gallon because we're really not painting the doors and the windows the relights that may be in that room taking out about 10 percent of the surface and that means we're actually going to go further with our material spread rate than normally if you have a lot of perimeter walls that are all glass you may want to bump that up to 25 percent saying 25 percent of the surfaces in that room really don't paint cabinets, countertop, whatever, and then we can also have that adjust the material spread rate up. This will calculate fewer gallons and make your bid more accurate. Let's go ahead and leave that back at the default 10%. Okay, so here's where you can edit the materials and get that dialed in. Now the edit the equipment is when you have equipment on the job site where you can put in how many days, weeks, or months you need for equipment. This is best viewed on our third button down here that's called the review bid button. This is the bid summary and it will show you a complete breakdown of that project. And here's where you can enter your profit structure as explained in the setup instructions. You can access all of your data bases from these buttons up here at the top, which you will probably do uh, when you want to fine tune things. It allows you to put in for travel time, or you can put an X here and it'll automatically uh, put in calculations for travel time. And if you want to edit those travel calculations, just click the button here and it'll take you to that page, which allows you to change the way this is calculated very easily. You can also add for per diem, which will add for food and hotel expenses for that job. I can add miscellaneous hours just for the heck of it. If I feel that it's going to be a difficult customer to work with, I can drop in an extra, oh, I don't know, 16 to 24 hours, who knows, and put down what it's for. I can put in a specific dollar amount just to get my bid amount to a number that is closer to what I, I want to submit. So go ahead and pause your screen and take a look at this one, and you can see how it breaks down the bid for you. Scrolling down to the bottom part of this bid here, you can see where I can put in change orders or alternates. Change orders, alternates, pretty much the same thing at this point in time during a bid process. So you can type in the description, put in what's the amount for that bid, what's the paint material amount of that, and it will calculate for you your paint labor um, dollars, your painting labor do uh, dollars and the hours, and you can also designate which estimator sold that if that was sold by a separate estimator um, past the point of the original bid. So oh, that gets us to the overview. Now we've looked at all the other buttons here. This is a new feature we've added that's kind of fun. We can click on bid compare. And now it will take the four different manufacturers that we have in the database, use their materials that are equal to what you have specified and show you the price difference. And over here, the difference is what's the important part. Because we specified Sherwin-Williams, there is no difference. That is the Sherwin-Williams bid. This one is $437 more. This is $291 more. This is $145 less. This will help you to figure out if you do a material substitution to a different manufacturer, you may be more competitive and by how much that could lower your bid. It also could be a bargaining chip to the contractor. Yes, we can switch to a different supplier and we can lower your bid by $100. 50 bucks, say. So that's a, a fun little button there. Proposal sheet, yes, it automatically generates proposal sheet here for you. The instructions tell you just take out blank lines and edit anything you want to edit down here, and then you'll be just fine. Come down here to the accounting tab. Congratulations, you sold the job. All the information will pull forward automatically 
no other setup. Your change orders will show up in here and you'll be able to designate which ones apply or not. If they don't apply, just zero out the dollar amount and it will fix everything that way. We can expand this to show that number here. There's your paint with your change orders amount there. There's painting. If you add carpentry work, you can type in a dollar amount there and it will pick that up as well. So, so much for the accounting tab. If you want to pause your screen and look at that, we have the financial breakdown at the bottom too as well. It's just kind of a duplication of what we had on the bid review. Now when it comes to production, blue buttons over here, this is a sheet that you can give to your field, which will give them a breakdown, the quantity, based on the units, how they were measured, how many coats go on each substrate, and it allows you to designate to them exactly how many hours were estimated, and it gives them a goal hours. Yes, we did 48 hours here in this column, but we need you to get it done in 36 if you want to hit some kind of a bonus incentive program you guys may have. Yes, you can edit this to whatever you want. If you want to put that in at 10% more reasonable, you can certainly do that, and it will automatically recalculate all the way down. It also has the yellow column, which allows you to enter the hours that it did take so that it will track your actual production, showing you where your estimate is coming in compared to actual, thereby helping you fine-tune and get your estimates dialed in perfect. That's the production sheet that goes out to the production. Now, the color sheet is where you can enter your colors for the job. When you get the job, you can now go to the Sherwin Williams people, if that's who you used, and get their color numbers as you would order it from them. What's their name for the product? And then over here is a designator. You would designate the first one, PT1, as in description over here. This is PT1. That's going to be color letter A. I have another PT1 down here. This is also color number A. We have B, C, D, so B is for paint number two, C is for paint number three. These are things that you will designate to them to help the system just identify what colors go where and how that's going to calculate your materials for you. Back to my job materials. When I click on that, this is very interesting here where it says for the job, here's the color you need of this white, uh, near white color. You need 30 gallons for primer. You need 30 gallons for finish. One prime, one finish. Here on this one for PT2, you need 11 gallons of primer, and you need 22 gallons because that's a two-coat system. So it calculates for you exactly how many gallons you need for that project based on a substrate. And yes, for color number A, it did pick up all the line items that have A as it's designated. So this 30 gallons is for everything that is color A, no matter which line it's on, no matter what plan page it's on, no matter where it is on the project. And then you can keep track of how many gallons you've ordered for your uh, primer and how many gallons you've ordered for your finish to let you know uh, where you stand as far as material uh, accuracy. Uh, this is another trick that you can use if you want. We also have a job equipment page here where it's pretty much a checklist just to help you put in um, how much you may need for a job for various types of sundries and or equipment. As I'm looking through this, yes, we need some caulking. You better give me two tubes of caulking. We need lots of masking tape. We like the two ends. Let's give me 12 rolls of masking tape for this project. And that kind of thing. And you'll see it will flag yellow to help your field people know that if it's a yellow box, something's there. Make sure you have this before you set off for the job site. Automatically populates with the job site information here. And down below, it allows you to do the same thing with the equipment here. Now, if you have checked any of the lift equipment as you're doing the bid, it will automatically show up here as to how many weeks you need for any of the items that you have selected automatically. Again, a good double check for your field people to make sure you have the sundries and equipment that they need before they go to the job. At the bottom of the screen, it's just where it tells you how to set up the job. It only takes about a half an hour to an hour at the most. Step by step, if you want to freeze the screen and take a look at this, very simple. And we have instructions on how to use this module down below. So if you have any questions, just read the instructions first and it'll answer most of your questions. So that's the basics of the PlanSwift estimating system. Now the price on this is currently set at about $6.95. However, if you have purchased the a system already, we offer discounts to people who already have that. We're just going to call that an enhancement. If you're purchasing for the first time, then the $6.95 will be the price that uh, is currently um, being charged. However, you can always call and see if there's any specials being offered at any point in time. If you have any questions or would like a personal demonstration, please go ahead and send me an email, set a schedule at the information on screen, or a call at the 817-223-3520. That's a cell phone permanently uh, stable to my backside, so it seems. Looking forward to hearing from you, and thank you.